Hello, welcome to the Steam Next Fest. My name is Hannah Flynn. I'm Communications Director at Fell Better Games, and I'm here today to introduce you to Mask of the Rose. Um, this is a pre recorded stream. We will be doing live streams during the Next Fest, so please check the page if you want to come by live and ask questions. Um, hopefully, you will already be familiar with our work. You may know us from Sunless Sea or Sunless Skies or the browser game Fallen London. Um, Fallen London is in fact the setting for Mask of the Rose. Uh, Mask of the Rose is going to be a really wonderful introduction to our universe for you, um, I hope. It is kind of a compact playing experience relative to our other games which are more on the lifestyle end of <laughs> how long it takes to, uh, to play them. Um, and it is a murder mystery and a romance visual novel with lots of additional accoutrement and delicious features that I'd love to introduce you to now. Um, to give you the setup, Mask of the Rose is set uh, just a few months after London was stolen by bats. And this is Victorian London. Um, we are talking about uh, something that has been supplanted from the surface, dragged below ground into a cavern, post some kind of agreement which left these tall cloaked figures in charge the masters and in mask of the rose you'll come to know mr pages one of the masters of the bazaar very well um very very well it is a romance game uh so you uh you begin the game by collecting census information from your neighbors that is um the meat of Act 1, and that's largely what's available in the demo. Uh, the demo is on the page, takes about 45 minutes to play it. It doesn't save, but uh, obviously the full game will. You can um, check it out, hopefully, and if at all anything about this piques your interest, please do give us a wish list. Um, it is life or death stuff for indie developers to receive wish lists. Um, and it would be wonderful to have yours. So I'm going to open up the game just shortly, but first of all, I would like to show you some of our settings and accessibility information. Um, not all of this is available in the demo. It is going to be obviously available in the full game. You can turn on and off screen shake and zoom type stuff. You can make the UI transparent, obviously turn uh, or, or not transparent, turn audio off in different ways and uh, change up the fonts. So if you don't enjoy reading cursive fonts, you can change, you can turn those off and you can change the text size. Um, you can also turn the text reveal speed right off um, or right up or right down and turn autoplay on or off. So on subsequent playthroughs, if you feel like you want to click through the stuff you've seen before, you can put autoplay right up and, and the speed right up and just let it run. Um, hopefully and obviously debug won't, won't be available to you in the game but we're going to jump straight in i'm going to show you something that we haven't shown on stream before um and a, and a couple of things in fact uh but uh, we're not starting at the beginning of the story here um we're just going to jump straight into it um you can't actually see super well here but the options that are available at the bottom of the screen now i've taken my head away um three of those are in the demo recall the past change outfit and head outside but build a story is new. That's something that you won't have seen before. Um, for some context, this is your bedroom. This is where you live in Horatia Chapman's boarding house in fallen London. Um, within the uh, within the game, you choose a background for your character, um, which will enable you to have different kinds of options in conversation with your um, peers and neighbours. Uh, my background at this point is arcane academic, so I have connections in um, academia and high society, um, and I think the church. Uh, but you can choose to be a dock worker's child or a tailor. Um, there are a number of options at the opening of the game, and those will give you, as I say, different ways to proceed through conversation. Um, you can also change your outfit so people think different things of you when you're wearing different things. Um, right now I have on my... Um, wonderful admiral's hat and my glasses my badge um i at the moment your character is representing the ministry of accounting and recounting taking part in the census of everybody living in london um, and if you wear your census takers badge then people are more likely to open up to your authority um, and then you could also change your academic gown if you wanted to um, but every time you take something off or put something on the um description here will um reacted to that which is fun it's very dynamic this is a more sort of flirtatious hat so i think i might wear that 
Um, so the outfit notes then have changed. The gown and badge say I'm offering my consulting expertise to the ministry. The hat says I don't spend all my hours in the library. I think that represents me pretty well. Uh, we'll look at building a story in a second. Um, but firstly, just to give you a taste of the kinds of stories that we're telling, um, you can, throughout the game, recall the past, which is when your character is hearkening back to the night that London was stolen by bats. Um, the movement of the city from the, sur from the surface to the cavern of the Neath was super traumatic for everyone. Um, and what, what better way to start this live stream with some, with some trauma? Let's do that. So let's just quickly recall the past before we do anything else. And I'm going to do my best reading voice, but please forgive me if I stumble. I remember the days of the fall in fragments. There are a few moments that I'm always drawn back to, memories that stand for everything else that happened. Even now I don't understand that bats could behave in so strange a way. There are no accounts of their behaviour that would describe anything similar. I studied the accounts of the naturalists afterwards. Here we are in the basement of the boarding house. That's Archie, our housemate. And he's Scottish, but I won't insult anyone Scottish by attempting the accent. I reckon it's a tornado. I've read heard a summit similar in the Welsh hills back to 1760. No light in the sky and a noise like a thunderclap. That's no tornado, love. It's a plague of Egypt. Oh, Grizz has turned up. These are our landlady and housemate, Horatia and Grizz. Let them talk it out. I've seen tornadoes. They come and then they move right on again. And they aren't made of bats. They say the tornado scattered livestock every which way. Sheep on rooftops and that. Then the ground shook again. I believe we can uh, we can blame Mr. Basilgate's excavations, digging about under London, causing a seismic disturbance. And what did he find down there but a cave of three million bats? Is that what you reckon? There are stranger things beneath London. That was the beginning of it, but we were down there for hours and hours. The sky darkened and it didn't return to normal. Once around midnight, Grizz went upstairs and opened the door to the street, but she came right back down again. She said the cobbles were galloping about. It wasn't safe to walk outside. After that first bit, the memories collide and get confused. I have trouble keeping track of which came first and which came later and whether I'm imagining something. I've spent a lot of days like this, thinking back, trying to piece together the bits of the puzzle, as if I could realise something that would make sense of it all. And because we've reminisced, this is a new thing you will not have seen in the demo, um, we've discovered a location that we can consider um, when we're making stories. Uh, before the fall is somewhere that we can place people in stories now. So every time you go off and have a conversation or visit a new location, you're likely to pick up some some information that you can then recall and use to make stories out of it later. Um, let's have a quick look at our outfit. So as I said, I'm an arcane academic. Um, I've got my hat on. I think maybe I'll switch back out for my admiral's hat so we can go and um, com <laughs> go and really tell people what for when we leave the house. Um, let's head out. Actually, first of all, let's just have a quick look at where we're at. So these are all the people who we've met. This is not available in the demo, but this is your kind of quest log. Um, you are able to go back over the things that you've just read. Um, so this is, you know, if you forget where you were at, you can come and refresh yourself here. And these are the people who we know. We know various things about our housemates already because at this point in the game we've been speaking them to, to them for a while. Um, so let's have a quick look at building a story before we leave the house. Uh, story crafting is the main kind of mini game in Mask of the Rose. Uh, we have a couple of assignments in progress right here. Let's have a quick look at um, Harjit's mystery solution. He's asking us for a mystery solution. So in story crafting, you select motives, people, actions and places and throw them into this kind of murder cork board. Uh, and then the story on the right hand side pane will 
uh, dynamically generate based on your choices. Um, so for example, when we click up here on motive, Mr. Pages hoped to save London, did he? Or did he hope for power? I think Mr. Pages wants power. So that just fills in what he wanted. And does something happen? Presumably, but what? Well, let, let's see. Who are we going to talk about here? Let's put Grizz on the other side of the equation here. Grizz has quite a lot to do with Mr. Pages. She's working under him at the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting at the, at the outset of the game. So Grizz can't do these things, but she can hope for Mr. Pages' attention. Mr. Pages most of all wished for power, Grizz for interest. And then what did he do? He set up the census. He established a census. What did Grizz do? Grizz found herself mentioning Mr. Pages in conversation rather more frequently than necessary. Mr. Pages was it passionately enamoured. Gosh. Uh, so we, you see you can kind of pick and choose through the story here until you get one that you like the look of. Um, hmm. Maybe she feared social disapproval. What happened? He deputised Grizz. Grizz defended Pages being very fond of him. He is powerful because of the thing he set up and she regrets nothing. So now we've got a bunch of options. Let's read out where we are at with our story. Mr. Pages dreamed of power. Grizz hoped for attention from Mr. Pages. Mr. Pages established a census of London's inhabitants. Grizz found herself mentioning Mr. Pages in conversation rather more frequently than necessary. Hopeful of love, Mr. Pages granted Grizz a deputy position more on grounds of affection than merit. Grizz feared her friends would disapprove of her. She defended Mr. Pages to her friends. Grizz regrets nothing, and Mr. Pages now enjoys tremendous power in London. Is that how it went down? Um, so we have saved that little story now, um, and uh, various characters within the game are going to ask us for stories for various purposes. So there are different reasons to put one together, and um, the the um, outcoming stories are of different kind of quality. Um, so you'll kind of see as you as you progress who wants what and why, uh, and have a lot of fun. I hope messing with that. Um, let's have a little quick look around outside in London. So we have a number of locations that we've already unlocked. This is where we live. Ferret is a menace eradicator who deals with. Um, Rats, uh, moles, um, bats, all sorts of things. Um, we could go and visit the Tentagram Synagogue, or we could pop over to see Mr. Pages at the bazaar. Let's go to the synagogue and hopefully collect some census information. Who's around? David and Rachel. So because we are wearing our census taker's badge and our outfit, these two characters have immediately noticed that and started looking over it. I'm not familiar with that ministry. It's new. We're on our way to services, so this is not a suitable time for ministry business. Wait here, Rachel, or you can stand a bit to the side if you want, wherever you're comfortable. I'll speak with this person. It won't take long. Shouldn't, anyway. So because of the things that we're wearing, where you see this icon, we have different conversation options. Um... I'm going to introduce myself as an agent of the ministry and I hope to have a quite efficient conversation here and get information out of this guy. Please uh, permit me to introduce myself. Hannah, agent for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. He doesn't meet your eye. David and Rachel Landau. Rachel is my sister. What can we do for you? I'm working on the census. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. I'll answer your questions, Hannah, if you answer mine. Call it character research. Ah, Rachel the novelist. Are you having peculiar dreams down here? Hmm. 
I'm going to suggest that the entire setup of the way we're living now is rather a peculiar dream. Frankly, I'm still waiting to wake up from a nightmare I had months ago. Sordid business with bats. Yes, I can just see Lord Heritor Chindless making such a jest. I thought we'd agreed you wouldn't be making more use of the Chindless dynasty. <laughs> so she's trying to cast us in her book. We did say that, but the readers keep writing to see more of them. Go ahead with your questions, Hannah. Uh, so let's find out a bit about these two for the census. Uh, here we go. So David and Rachel have appeared together and then we have some options for both of them. Um, the census questions are somewhat unusual. We do want to know where people live and what they do, but we also want to know about their affairs of the heart. Uh, let's start with something a bit more sort of above, above board. Ask Rachel what she does for a living, making clearance for the census. For the census, what is your employment, if any? I write novels. They're published one chapter at a time in the Lily of London magazine. I was in the midst of one when the fall happened. My publisher insisted that I continue the story despite all. Pungently condemn Rachel's rascally publisher. Um, so the some of the options that you get, I haven't had that option before, um, but I think that one is due to being kind of a fusty academic-y type. Uh, and if you choose a more kind of... Uh, touch of the common man sort of background then you'll just have different things to say um, I am going to call them rascally though what a despicable character reprehensible ah thanks my friend <laughs> you're kinder than I would be in a similar circumstance what is her story about what are you writing about if you take the Lily of London friend you may have the pleasure of reading my next chapter yourself though I confess I'm at a standstill as to what it will contain my heroine was meant to set off for Paris and there, and there to be reunited with her lost beloved. But as the fall has transpired in fiction as well as in fact, I must resign myself that the courtship is ruined. Hmm. Shame. What a pity. Thanks, friend. Right. Let's find out more about Rachel. How does she live? Oh, I can get quite pushy with people in this outfit. Um, I'm just going to be clear that it's for the census. For the census, who lives in your household? Our home contains myself, my brother and our housekeeper. It isn't a grand establishment. We had a Jewish housekeeper for many years, but she passed away and Phoebe had lost her place with a neighbour of ours. No one speaks for a moment. Rachel brings up a legend common among the servant classes that the Neath contains many other fallen cities. They say if you travel far enough through the cave... You'll find the ruins of Kitze. And if you walk three times the circumference of the cave counterclockwise, you'll come to the palace of the Queen of Sheba. No one has discovered even one edge of the cave yet. She's not meant to be easy to find. <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. But let's keep, uh, let's try and complete a census page here so we can go and hand something into Mr. Pages. Uh ask, making it clear for the census whether Rachel is in a relationship. For the census, what is your romantic status? Married? Betrothed? Are you in love? No, at least that isn't what I'd call it. Just as well, too, in the times before you would never have darkened the door of such a person. Before you cast me as the intolerant brother, Hannah, you should know what we're speaking of. Milton is a yellow-eyed, flash-dressed, hot-handed creature at least two decades too old for my sister. Hmm. Can we find out more about him? Oh dear, the rules of polite society have been broken somewhat in the fall, haven't they? Nothing of the sort. Milton is an artistic inspiration. If you are not a writer yourself, my friend, you cannot guess how much the fall has disrupted our sort of work. Characters have certain tastes, certain preferences, certain prejudices... All I need to do is imagine them in new circumstances and their reactions write themselves. But now, we've all been at least a little cracked by the fall. How does anyone behave? Who can say? You always said you wrote from observation. You can still observe. Since the fall, there's no pattern in what I see. It is only home that makes sense to me, and I cannot make my whole novel about a brother and sister lighting candles at Shabbat. 
Oh, maybe at this point her art must truly develop. It sounds as though you must learn to write when it is not easy. The rest of the world must come into it somehow. Milton helps me sort the rest of the world. He can make sense of anything, even a Viscountess running down the street in her peignoir. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Peignoir. Peignoir? Shakes fist. <laughs> it's easy to understand a misbehaving Viscountess. Everything else is stranger. Let me say, Hannah, Milton smokes rose-scented cigars. He helps me. Oh, I want more gossip about this Milton character. Goodness, really? Milton quotes poetry instead of making conversation. What does that signify? Milton carries in his breast pocket a jar of honey with a tiny spoon. Plenty of men of fashion behave that way. Ooh. Are you all right? Oh, it's just my stomach again. Why is it troubling me today of all days when I haven't eaten? Tomorrow we must find you a doctor, even if we have to choose someone you don't already know. Well, we know someone who's training to be a doctor. Our housemate Archie. A young man at my lodging house is trained in medicine. He's been helping all sorts of patients recently. I could ask him to call on you. We shouldn't trouble a stranger. His sister puts a hand on his arm. That would be a great kindness, thank you. She reaches into her bag and takes out a calling card. It proclaims her identity as Miss Rachel Landau, authoress. And now we've discovered their residence. She, uh, yes, ooh, we must go. Everything is always running too slowly and yet every day is the same. Look after yourself, friend. It's time to go home. Let's go straight to the table. So in that conversation, we discovered tons of stuff that we can now put into story crafting. Uh, two different people, lots of different motives, and another person, Milton, the devil, a devil, uh, fighting and all sorts of stuff, and then writing novels. Very helpful. Hello, Archie. Archie and Grizz are waiting for me when I get to the table. Archie has his usual grim face on. How is your census taking proceeding? Have you met anyone new? I bring up the Landau's and David's illness. I'll look in on them tomorrow. Might be a bit more use than I can be with the nightmares. Maybe I can collect another page while I'm in here. Ah, no, I've already collected these two. I chew diligently. The first few days weren't bad. People had food in their pantries still, old loaves of bread, leftover joints, roots and jams. But nothing new was coming into the markets. No new fish, no vegetables from the farms. Hmm. 235 days since the fall. And that's the end of the day. So the gameplay is broken up into days and you get a certain amount done every day. And every morning you receive the newspaper. A large amount of these headlines were generated by our Kickstarter backers. Thank you so much if you backed us and provided one of these headlines. Let's see what we have today. Missing baby found in vast basement spiderweb. Masters urge calm. Yes, as if I could be calm. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So now we have a number of other locations available to us. Um, we can also recall the past again, but I think we should just head straight outside. We could pop round to see the Landau's, um, or we could go and hand in our pages. Um, let's try and collect David's information before we head over to see Mr. Pages. Visit David and Rachel at home. And this is a new character who we haven't met in the demo. And this is a new location that you will not see in the demo. Good morning. I'll see whether my master and mistress are at home. Hannah, your appearance reminds me of something. I have a research question. Do you find that you speak with new people after the fall? Sometimes people you would never have spoken to before. Uh, let's make a joke. I keep the same society as ever, only not so well lit. The price of wax is scandalous now. 
Our housekeeper Phoebe found a method for making candles that burn brighter with less. A great help to us. But perhaps we should stop interrogating you and let you ask whatever you came to ask. I'd like to find out more about you for the census, David. <clears throat> I'm going to ask you with my badge hat on. Badge hat. For the census, what is your employment? We have money in the funds and interests in several businesses in London and elsewhere. The time was I used to be very busy in answers le answering letters from Livorno, from Amsterdam. These days my time is not so extensively occupied. Mm, we're expected elsewhere. Everything is always running too slowly. And yet every day is the same. Goodbye then. Ah, I didn't get enough information out of you, David. <clears throat> okay, let's go and drop off our page about Rachel with Mr. Pages. In his office at the bazaar. Um, let's go meet him by ourselves. I want to find out more about him. Grizz has already shown me once how to visit the ministry. It's not hard for me to return on my own. Mr. Pages is at his, uh, its desk when I come in. He raises his head and looks at me without saying anything. Do you have anything more? Yes, we met Rachel. Mr. Pages is pleased enough with my information to give me two pennies. Oh. It looks through the sheets of the form in its usual way. It doesn't find much to interest it in the account of Rachel's romantic life. It is much more intrigued by her employment. She invents love stories from nothing. These stories we will acquire. If they're suitable, then we will also acquire the authoress. Suggest hire. <clears throat> Surely you mean hire the authoress. You refer to mere employment or rentification? No. We will require another. The love stories must be mixed in type. I think we will also need some that reflect sad or negative impressions. Circumstances perhaps of significant misery or distress. You may prepare it at home and bring it to us when it is ready. Hmm. So it looks like Mr. Pages is interested in sad love stories. It's at times difficult to tell whether Pages is an intentionally ill-mannered or merely has no interest in discovering what the proper etiquette might be. It is almost time to eat. Let's go straight to the table. Busy day. Hey, Grizz. I suppose you've heard the news? Perhaps she got that promotion. Did Mr. Pages give you more responsibility? I know it's only a matter of time. Alas, no. The masters have received word from the surface. Whoa, the rest of the world is all still there. The remains of England, France, all the rest as it was. Only London was abstracted. There are crates and crates of mail from the world above. They're going out to London now as we speak. Hmm. I think I'm suspicious of them. The masters could have done this at any time, couldn't they? I don't know what you mean. Did Mr. Pages say how he finally discovered the way back to the service? No. I'm going to push it. Was there a sudden arrival from above, a, bla a brave explorer from the upper world who found their way to us? It is possible that a mining expedition that broke through from Cornwall into the hollow, hollow below... Looks like I've hit a bug there. Why don't we... Uh, why don't we call it a day there then? Shame to end on a bug, but here we are. Um, so that's just a quick look at Mask of the Rose. Um, lots in there that you will not have seen in the demo, but the demo itself is, as I say, a truncated version of the first act of the game. So you can spend a few days gathering census information and meeting the people and characters, uh, maybe developing some affections for some of them. Um, it is possible to play the game without angling for romance. You can choose at the outset that you are interested in friendship, romance, attraction or romance and attraction. Um, so you can have kind of an Aero Ace playthrough if you wanted to. Uh, and you can spend time matchmaking characters with others. So lots on the table for you to enjoy. Um, I hope that that has piqued your interest. 
and uh, please do give us a wish list if you are interested to follow development until release next April. We will, I hope, see you then for uh, the full release of Mask of the Rose with lots more amazing stories and ca characters and creatures for you to meet. Um, but thank you so much for your time and please do come back for one of the scheduled live streams. Check the page to see if you've missed them. Um, but it would be lovely to have your questions and your, your presence and support for that too. All right. Thank you so much. And this stream will now loop. So if you haven't had enough of me, I'll be back.